New York Times comes out with an article, and I want to read this to you, okay? Um, survey, only half of New Yorkers plan to stay in Democrat City, okay? So only half of New Yorkers plan to stay in Democrat City, according to the survey of more than 6,600 New York City households, reported the New York Times. This is coming from New York Times, by the way. But, 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 his fragile, and then this goes to Breitbart's story, Joe Biden received 76% of New York City's vote in 2020. Okay, 76% of New York City's vote in 2020. And Democrat Eric Adams received 66% of New York City mayoral vote in 2021. So why is everyone so unhappy with New York City when everyone's getting exactly what they voted for? Unhappy, these Democrats, uh, Democrats are especially, compared to seven years ago, only 39% are content with the state of public education currently right now. 37% are happy with the level of public safety in their neighborhoods, and only 34% are satisfied with the neighborhood's cleanliness. Less than a third, less than a third rate cities quality of life as excellent or good. Less than a third quality of life, excellent or good. Less than a quarter are content with the overall quality of government services. Y you know, do you think it gets to a point where bad policies are so bad that people on the opposing side even say, I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore, Tom. Yeah, I do. And I think if you know your history, and I'll be quick with this, go back and look what the survey said, and that led to the election of Mayor Giuliani. And we can say what you want about him uh, now in association with Trump and things he's had, but go back and look at what led to Mayor Rudy Giuliani being elected. It was a similar time with a bunch of things that were completely out of hand, and the people voted the other way. People voted the other way. And, and, and by well, the Giuliani, way, he and, came but, in and look what he did. But and, there's a bigger problem now, which is that uh, New York as a state, someone could check the numbers on this. I think the state itself has lost about 500,000 people since COVID, right? Net. So, right. So 500,000 and many of them are now voting the right way in Florida. So Florida is getting redder. And then by these people leaving, New York is thus getting bluer. So now you've, you've put a divide there, but also there is no Giuliani left in New York. We've talked about, I think mm -hmm. we talked about it on mm -hmm. uh, when we did the mm -hmm. live show here with him. There is no Rudy left there that thinks that they can fix it. Now, maybe the miracle person shows up and, and can really reverse the direction of the of the entire machine, but probably not. When, uh, when Kathy Hochul, who was one of the worst COVID maniacs in the country, when she got elected, which wasn't a re-election, it was her first election because she obviously took over for Cuomo, she only won by about 500,000 votes for governor this last time. To Zeldin. But to Zeldin, yeah. who nobody knew two weeks before That's the right. election. He was a little That's congressman right. nobody had heard of. So she wins by 500,000 votes, but we know about 500,000 people left the state. Now, it's not to say every single one of them would have voted that way, but the point is the divide now has gotten bigger and bigger. And I think we're just going to, there's almost no way to reverse that. Can you imagine a, a sane, let's say a somewhat conservative leaning New Yorker saying, I'm going to run for, <clears throat> for mayor of New York and winning? How, how would it be possible? Well, I, I think, I think I'm telling you, I know this sounds crazy and bold, but I think Trump's camp is convinced they can flip New York. Okay. I think they think there's a chance mm -hmm. they can flip New York. Do you know do, what? Do you think they can flip New York? Well, I th I think I think right now, you know, if you're if you're playing a, um, if you're playing a game and you're looking at the score and what happened over the years and how close it is, it's not close. The Dems are still ahead, but the more and more and more. Give you an example, Stephen A. Smith. Can you pull up Stephen A. Smith? By the way, the clip with Chris Cuomo. So the, both Chris Cuomo and Stephen A. Smith are probably voting left and have their entire lives, okay? Presidents, whites. Let's just, Cuomo, last name, father, Mario, brother, Andrew, CNN. That's his background. That's what he's done. We know where he's probably going to lean politically. <clears throat> yep. Stephen A. Smith is fair. He'll give his thoughts and his opinions, but he's also probably voting the other side. Again, folks, I don't know. I'm not speaking. I'm just saying probably. Mm -hmm. I'm giving guesstimation. They can come out and say, Patrick, you're wrong. You know, we voted in a different way. But I'm saying that's probably where they are. But watch what Stephen A. Smith says that what's not working today. Watch this. It's good to have you. I got a couple of topics you. for you. It's a, it's a yeah. beautiful shirt. First thing is, you don't like the way the media played the Trump bloodbath situation. Why? 
Well, first of all, I thought that he was talking about the United States and China and the auto industry. And I thought that they mm -hmm. used it as an opportunity to expose and exploit the kind of things that they wanted to about Donald Trump. Fair enough. The problem mm -hmm. is, is that he's kicking their tail. That's really what this comes down to. Uh, according to the polls, he's up, he's gaining momentum. And when you use these kind of tactics and it, it comes with a question mark, it comes with some trepidation. I don't think that's something that is, it has shown itself to work against Trump over the last few months or so. I mean, the guy's got four indictments, 91 counts against him. He's been impeached twice. He's got, he just lost a civil case where he was ordered to pay in excess of $400 million. And he keeps gaining campaign dollars. He keeps gaining momentum. And somehow, some way, they keep using the same old tactics. That was really my point. It's not working. It's not being effective. He's literally kicking their butts. And they've got to get their act together and find a different strategy because the fear mongering over the kind of things that may come out of his mouth is not the kind of tactics as have proven to work against this man, at least as of late. Pause it right there. Okay, so check this out. You hear Stephen A. Smith. He's a New York guy. You can just listen to him. Mm -hmm. He's an East Coast guy, right? Yeah. And he's saying this. And by the way, he works for an organization <laughs> that got rid of a lot of people that were on the right side that maybe right. they didn't work out or you stopped hearing from them. We can name some of these guys. You ever sit there and you're like, what happened to... Broussard, what happened to Sage? What happened to all of the, where did they go all of a sudden? That was the organization. Even when I was sitting down with Stephen A and I was interviewing him when we were in New York at ESPN, you know what his handler kept telling Mario? He kept telling Mario, hey, Mario, Patrick better not ask any politics. Stephen A doesn't want to really? address any political questions. Mm. And I said, does Stephen A not want to <laughs> answer political or questions? You. Or does ESPN not want Stephen A to be wanting to ask answer political questions. Bingo. So you, you just kind of watch to see what's going on. Do you think common sense is going to prevail? Like maybe even let's do this. Okay, let's do this. Rob, can you run a poll for me? Run a poll and say chances Trump wins New York. Okay, put less than 25 percent, put 25 to 50 percent, put 50 percent plus. Okay, Chances he wins New York. And by the way, folks, while you're uh, voting for this, don't vote emotionally. Actually, think about it. It's very, very hard to beat New York. What do you think is going to happen? Can we get the numbers on New York last time? That would be that would be. We, we pulled it up the other day, yeah. but it was like 50, 46, 40, 50. I don't know what the. I have but it was numbers something I like, sent, Rob, at current numbers. Uh, and by the way, just a heads up, all the next that I get. Uh, on the app, all the majority of the New Yorkers, from cops to business people to everybody, I'm not joking, Dave, mm -hmm. all of them, every single one of them is like, hey, man, what the, like, can you, you know guys talk, yeah. talk about this problem, talk about this problem, I'm moving, how's Florida, I'm coming, every single New Yorker that I speak to, shout out to everybody that I talk to on my neck, they're all like, bro, I'm talking about law enforcement guys that yep. own pizza shops. They're like, this is just effing crazy. They're like, I got to get the fuck out of here. I, I could show you, I can't do it on air, but yeah. I could show you easily 10 conversations I'm having with guys that were NYPD, former mm. NYPD, yeah. that all have left. Yep. And most of them are here now. And that's, again, it goes to that divide. You start <clears throat> losing all of the good people. So the question is, even if Trump's policies make more sense, and even if everyone's like, you know, I've had it, they're roasting rats on the subway, this is a problem, uh, there may just not be a good enough good people left and you got to you got to give the devil his due the media has confused people and lied to people about so much that people just vote the wrong way there you go 61 38 <laughs> but keep in mind keep yeah. in mind when this was <clears throat> this vote was when 2020 november 2020 mm -hmm. what COVID. happened to new york post oh, yeah. november totally different. 2020 totally different if i can give a little perspective on this it's, and i sent you some numbers to validate this look the big three blue liberal states we all know this california New York, and then if you want to put Illinois as a second runner-up, you know, second city. Uh, those are the big three. But if you actually peel back the numbers and you actually take a look at the bigger context of what's going on in California, your guy's state, in New York, it's not even close. Because if you look in the at the sort of the, like, the zeitgeist of each of these cities, New York is capitalism. It's Wall Street. Is you know, Vinny's from Yonkers over here. There's like this, what the fuck is going on here type of vibe. California is totally different. Hollywood, Silicon Valley, it's literally left, far left. So if you look at the numbers, Rob, Trump has closed the gap by 10. So if you look at the numbers now, there's only a, basically a 10-point lead in New York between Biden and Trump, whether it's 42-32 or 46-36. But if you go to California, it's actually still a 20-point lead, that same 20-point lead that 
Biden beat Trump in 2020. So something in the DNA of New Yorkers yeah. is basically saying, I'm not just going to go along with the blue no matter who mantra. What's that syndrome where you like your abuser and you fall in love with it? Stockholm, Stockholm syndrome. Stockholm syndrome. That's yeah. exactly what, because it's it, it's that close still. That means people are just like, no, I, anything but Trump. And they're willing to suffer just yeah. because they the, the orange bad man Hitler guy, that's what they don't but want. Let's also not forget, you know, where's Trump from? New York. New York. Oh, New York. New York. There's no Trump. Not yeah. just the political Trump. The 2016 of down course. the escalator the home Trump. Alone, home alone. You're two talking Trump. about the, <laughs> which the home alone. Which two. isn't on the cable bank, anymore. It's not on cable anymore. Yeah. The bankruptcy Trump. The yeah. casino Trump. Uh, the Trump. Uh, so like, there's a deep, deep history with I, Trump. I think, good and bad. I think uh, uh, New York is not afraid to take a stand, and everybody. <laughs> Everybody, but, sounds but, like an Eminem song. They, they, they yeah, can yeah. Come take his hand, <laughs> and they can we'll walk this road together, this road right? together. Uh, through the storm. Through oh, and I, I think New York's capable of doing that. A, a poet said everybody. that once, that's right? An amazing. But here's the poll for you: three thousand people voted, less than twenty-five percent, uh, twenty-eight percent, twenty-five to fifty percent chance, forty-five, fifty plus twenty-eight. So. You know, it, it's it's to say 73 says there's a less than 50 yeah. 50 percent chance he wins. I, 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 unfortunately, 28 percent uh, of our audience is now officially delusional if they think there's a greater than 50 percent chance that Trump wins New Tom. York. But respect well, to you guys out there. Words talk, numbers scream. Could you pop back to the polls? Really, the Siena polls. Take a look at the most recent Siena poll. Add those together. Biden 42, Trump 32. That is 75%. That means 25% of the people in that poll, these are the independents right now that on polling are saying neither. And it's showing up a lot. Mm -hmm. You can go to all the polling places. But this is the new strength of the American independent voter that people are not looking at this in the polls. Which way are those indies going to break when the rubber hits the road and the two conventions come and go and it gets serious and they're looking at the economy, yeah. they're looking at the border and it's time to well, vote. Well, if you look at, so, take a closer so, look so at the numbers. Oh, think sorry. about this. What are the chances? What, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Adam. No, I was Finish just going to say those num there's actually numbers that support what Tom is saying. Basically, Kennedy, RFK, is getting about 10 to 15 percent. Mm -hmm. And the leftist communist Cornell West is taking about 5% in New York. But watch so this. That's how the numbers but, but break. Watch this. This is what's interesting. This is what's interesting. When did you think a guy named uh, uh, Mark Cuban would defend Trump? When did you think a guy, Kevin O'Leary, would come out this publicly mm. defending a judge out of New York? Kevin O'Leary says New York Attorney General Letitia James threat to seize Trump's asset is an attack on America. He contempt, condemns New York Attorney General Letitia James' threat to seize Trump's assets, labeling it an attack on America, citing the significance of property rights and due process. You think about America, the reason this is the number one economy on earth is that we have laws and we have due process and we have property rights. O'Leary expresses concern over the unprecedented nature of James's action, noting the lack of precedent for a 30-day bond requirement and its potential impact on foreign investments. The concept of seizing assets is on a 30-day bond number has never been issued. No insurance company has ever issued anything near this, so there's no chance it was going to happen. The legal dispute arises... I mean, this is him saying the clip, and, and how long is this, Rob? Because I'm pretty much done with what he said. About a minute. Okay, it's, it's fine. I mean, I pretty much read what he said. Yeah. The legal dispute arises from James' lawsuit again, the Trump, against the Trump Organization for Fraud and Overvaluation of Assets, with Trump ordered to pay $350 million in damages by March 25th. And, he, and they're trying to right now find a way. And by the way, if, if he doesn't come up with the money on Monday— do you know what the lady on The View said the other day? Do you know what Letitia Shenton James said the other day? Do you know they can't? You know how they said, we can't wait for them to sit in court like this yeah. and have to answer questions? Do you know on The View, they're like, oh, I just can't wait to see Disgusting. his assets being seized. I just can't wait to see that happen. They're celebrating this happening. But Pat, I, I'm sure you know this, but the, point, the, the part that you didn't mention there is that the banks got paid back. 
Everybody was made whole. He makes a point of saying this in, in the CNN clip. So everyone was made whole. And this idea that you can just overvalue all your companies and the banks will give you whatever you it's want. Not how is, business works. It's not how bi- anyone no. that buys a house, you buy a million dollar house, you got to put 20% down. You need an $800,000 loan, but you can't just say to the bank, I would like $800,000, please. And that you, they look at the house, they see the comps, all, all the obvious and you stuff. You can't that, even tell the bank, I think <laughs> this is a $50 million property. No, it's called... Someone's got to go do the appraisal. Yeah, well, yeah, we'll that, do the underwriting. We'll do the appraisal, Mr. Buyer. Can you just stand over there for a minute with your realtor? Well, that's why the Mar-a-Lago thing. So Mar-a-Lago, they said it's valued at 18 million. It's 17 acres. An acre there on the water in West Palm. An acre alone is easy five mil. So like you just extrapolate that and then 18, 18 acres is special. So now you're going to have a premium. Just none of it makes any sense. But this is what they do. And again, I think this is why I'm not bullish on Trump winning New York because there are not a, enough good people left who get what the issues are. And and that leads just a, the divide to just go, grow and grow and grow. Rob, I'm going to send this to you based on what um, Dave just said, where they, they were CNN all bragging about the fact that this is not a, you know, they're telling the story when Letitia James came out saying Mar-a-Lago is worth $18 million, right? Watch this. Watch this. CNN story. I'm just going to give you the screenshot. If you can pull it up, Rob, I just literally texted it to you. Look what even CNN has Mar-a-Lago worth if he does a fire sale. Even CNN knows it's worth $240 million. Right. Okay. Do you realize this? They just pay tell this story. So Trump has until Monday to pay 454 in a fraud case. If he misses the deadline, the New York AG can start seizing his properties. Properties Trump could sell on a fire sale today. On a fire sale, even CNN says they can get $240 million from our lago. I mean, look, you've been there. The place could use a paint job. You know, they've got some cracks in the walls. There's some stuff that could be sure. fixed. But you know what? If they can get this thing for 18, how about we'll all split it? Oh, I'm all yeah. in. Uh, yeah, it's not even a question. It. But, but here's my question, you guys. Uh, from a legal standpoint, how the hell can she get away with this for this long and get to the point where they're going to seize this shit? What does that say about our legal system? But Dave? what does it say about New York? That's, oh. that's the point I'm trying to drive home. And that's what O'Leary is saying. This has nothing to do with Trump. The system is now so corrupt and it is so broken and there aren't enough good DAs left in New York. There aren't enough good lawyers. All of the people that are taking their businesses out of there, Elon taking, uh, what was it? The, uh, the X corporation out of Delaware. Yep. Like we're just going to see that divide continue and mm-hmm. continue. So the guy, the Rudy that was waiting when David Dinkins was destroying New York city, he doesn't live in New York in 2024. And that, that is the problem. I have a question for our friend, Dave Rubin. I think he'd be the perf- perfect person to answer this. You know, the one, the one thing you would hear about Trump, whether you like him or don't like him, is like, what was the moment that he lost your vote? What was that moment? What was the moment that he gained your vote? You know, the every, listen, 90% of the country has made up their mind. I'm talking about the movable middle, the independents, as you call them, the disaffected liberals, all yeah. that. We all remember the moments that people would basically highlight of when they lost Trump, like the David Duke moment, the both sides moment, the John McCain, I like my people captured, that whole moment. I like my people not captured. What do you think the moment is for the general American of why they're going to go back to Trump, meaning the capitalists, the Kevin O'Leary's of the world, the Mark Cubans of the world, their moment is now the money, bro. Like, you know, I might not like Trump's rhetoric, but when you start coming after hundreds of millions of dollars, They're next, I'm right. playing that they game. They can be next. What right. do you think the movable middle's moment is to go back to Trump? Well, the wokeness, the border, what do you think it is? The Cuban one is kind of funny because he's so wrong about everything, especially mm-hmm. as it relates to woke. And even now he's like, well, I do like my money, so I guess I should maybe, right. you know, kind of defend Trump on this thing. I would say the, the moment for, I can tell you the moment for me because I didn't vote for Trump the first time I voted for Gary Johnson and I should be judged accordingly <laughs> but then but then it was about two years into Trump and I was like wait things are kind of working peace yeah. in the Middle East economies chugging along everything you know the pre-COVID and then one day I was uh, I was having lunch in Beverly Hills and I happened to drive by a Trump rally on on Rodeo Drive over there and I was like you know what I've never been to one of these things let me, let me just see what's going on I was kind of coming around and I went there and it was the most joyous party of America loving people. And they had blacks for Trump and gays for Trump and Latinos for Trump and all of that. And virtually everyone there knew me and everybody was so excited that I was there that the next week I said, I said to Dennis Prager, Hey, you want to go to this thing? See what's going on. I started yeah. bringing more and more people. And Dennis was already on the, on the Trump train. 
but it, there was it, it had nothing to do with a political ideology per se. It didn't. It didn't. It wasn't like, oh, I'm for Trump, so that means I they believe. They partied it. better. It, I mean, stuff but, that matters. It, well, yeah. it was just like I love America more. Yeah. A- and and it wasn't like, okay, you better have 15 week abortion. <clears> and you had better have cap gain tax of this. It was that we love this country. We want to fix this country. And I think more and more as the Biden thing goes off the yeah. deep end, and I think especially with the border, I think more and more people are just going to be like, you know what? I can't have gangs of mm-hmm. cannibals running around the city that I live in. So Do you think right <laughs> now the, the border is the number one yeah. issue oh, that yeah. will move people from left? Oh, yeah. back? So let me ask you this. When, oh, was it, when was it for you? Well, it's been a slow drip. You know, thanks. Uh, yeah. Sit next to you. And obviously Dave Rubin. Working on this guy for years. Yeah, I think. For me, I mean, I'm in the same camp as probably an Elon Musk or a Joe Rogan where none of those guys were voting for Trump. I don't think ever. But at some point, you have to take a look at the landscape and say, all right, clearly the game has changed. Clearly the media has lied to me. Clearly we've been manipulated. Clearly a lot of the things that we thought about Trump or thought about certain things were fabricated by the media. Most people are not going to change overnight. Most people, it's going to be a slow move. I think it's just the reality of what's going on in America as a dude who actually certainly thinks that only women can have babies and that men can't transition like this and believes in borders. Uh, I think there's a slow drip to be like, what the is so going you, on So for you, yeah. it's a slow drip yes. on what happened. Yeah. Okay. I so, think the... So would you, would, you, would you say a part of it is the unfair treatment where it's like, this is getting a little bit too much at this point. Do you think you would put that at the top where, what, what are they doing to this? I think that's a, that's a part of it. That's not number one. I think number one is genuinely the border. Like what is happening here, guys? Like what, you know, right, and then the, right. uh, also an element is what the Democratic Party even stands for at this point. It used to be blue collar, the workers, you know, equal wages, all because that. Now it's Silicon Valley leftists and Harvard educated how idiots. People think there, how many people you think there are like Adam on where he was the first time we spoke? First time I spoke to him, I, I, uh, when he, he wanted to come down, he reaches out and, you know, he says, hey, Pat, you know, uh, I'm making a major life change. I want to come to Dallas. And I want to come join Valley 10. I say, you realize this is not Miami, bro. Like, there is no Freaknik here. So I, 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 I tell him there's <laughs> no Tom's not here. I'll, I'll, no. I'll make that yeah. sacrifice. <laughs> but, but so, so yeah. he, he, we're talking. I said, so where do you stand with politics? Well, you know, I just kind of like to hear everybody's. And I said, tell me about uh, Trump. What do you think about Trump? And, and literally the conversation got uncomfortable. And I'm sure you remember this. Did he cry? He, no, he didn't. Because he was like, uh, uh, "Well, uh, um, uh, why, why? I mean, you know, I, <laughs> you mean I didn't say not a fan. Not no, my, he, you know, not, he, not our best and brightest. He tried to kind of yeah. go through it because you're almost like, I'm like, is this guy a guy that you can have a conversation with? Or are you so much yeah. like deranged that there's no logic that you can have? And then he's like, "Yeah, it's kind of it's like, okay, cool, sounds good." Then he came and we started having a conversation, but but the. You, you were going to say you, know, you asked me if I was a Bernie guy. I said definitely not. But who you asked me who's your guy? Who did I say? Mansion. I said Joe Mansion. Yeah. If you're like a, said so a Democrat who gets a, a, a elected in a red s- state over and over again, yeah. I like that guy. To yeah. directly answer your question, though, yeah. you were asking how, how many of those people are there. Yeah. I, I talk. I mean, this is what I have focused yes. on for yeah. the last five years because I think the only real group of people who can move in America are the disaffected libs, and I think particularly over the last five months, mm-hmm. because of immigration, they're the ones that can move right now. There's no yes. Are there disaffected Republicans who are like ah, you know, the never Trump? Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. There, of course, there are, but they didn't vote for him last time. Right. There are an awful lot of old school liberals. JFK liberals, decent people like you, the Thank sort of you, apolitical sir. independent. That's a chunk of people that can move. Actually, when you were on with Mar on Club Random and you kind of challenged him, and I did the same thing with him, and it helps because he's stoned and drunk, so you can kind of <laughs> you can yeah. kind of work him. Um, but you basically said to him, "What are the good things Biden has done?" And he really didn't have much, right? And we can all point to the bad things Biden has done as it relates to the economy and, and particularly the border and the rest of it. And a lot of people see that. Even apolitical people see the crime going up in the streets and everything else. So the decent liberal Mm -hmm. who is suddenly like, you know what? My son thinks he's a girl. There's a cannibal living two blocks over. You're allowed to take over people's houses and they won't kick you out. You see that story out of Mm -hmm. New York now? Yeah. Do you have that story, Rob? They're just what pages they're just stacking a whole bunch of insane shit. And the good Mm -hmm. libs, and by the way, that was part of my argument for DeSantis was the good libs will much more easily be able to vote for DeSantis than Trump. But I think Trump has an opportunity now. You're leaving one story out. I have to go, I have to go to that story. 
I, have to I go can to no that. longer remain in today's Democratic Party. Tulsi Gabbard says she is no longer a Democrat. A potential Tulsi Gabbard VP. Where we are being told that we just have to comply and go along with whatever they say. American people uh, are smarter than this. However, we must remain vigilant to recognize their propaganda for what it is, pure lie. Unfortunately, we live in a time where free speech is under attack. Whatever they say goes, and we, we have to just follow. And the people who suffered under your reign as prosecutor, you owe them an apology. Taking on Kamala Harris on a debate stage before, I would look forward to doing that again. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.